What's up everyone? In today's video, we're gonna do an update to my previously released airbrush t-shirt design tutorial. I've got some new tips and tricks to show you, all of which will be done inside Photoshop. Let's go. What's up everyone? So first of all, thank you so much to all the new subscribers that are here. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribed. It means so much that you watch these videos, so thank you. Today's tutorial is gonna be sort of a 2.0 updated thing. Back in 2020, I did this how to design airbrush style graphics tutorial, um, and it was pretty well received. Got some views. Um, I also dropped a, um, uh, an airbrush textiles pack and an airbrush elements kit over on fullermo.com. All of that got really positive feedback. And since I have some like updated methods that I've been using, I thought why not do a refresher video? And so that's what we're gonna be doing today. I first wanna preface this tutorial by saying that if you can hire a professional airbrush artist to create your graphics, please do it because one, it's gonna turn out better. Like if you can get the real thing, it's just always gonna be better than anything you could ever do in Photoshop. And then two, it's just cool to support, you know, artists who are creating in that style, like period. So please do that if you have the means. This tutorial is more so for, I guess people who like don't have the budget to hire outside designers um, or for people who are maybe working towards that skill set they can illustrate but aren't quite there yet so you know this video is for you um, enough talk let's just jump into my computer and see what's going on all right so this is the graphic i came up with for today's tutorial um, as you can see the original photo looks quite a bit different um, so i'm excited to show you guys some new methods for creating this um, style of graphic we're also going to be implementing some use of the airbrush style um, elements kit that I have and the airbrush textiles pack. So I can show you guys how to use that stuff as well. You know how we do on this channel. I'll just get rid of this. We'll start with a blank canvas and uh, go from there. All right, so we're over in Google. We're trying to find the right image to use. I've got it filtered by large photos. I always do that in these tutorials when I'm using Google. Um, RIP Pop Smoke incredibly talented artist gone way too soon. I mean, no disrespect in using his photo for this tutorial or Aaliyah's and the other one for that matter. The reason I, I am using their photos is because airbrush style graphics have just been this amazing way to pay tribute and homage to, you know, whether it's family members, friends, um, you know, artists, celebrities who passed away. I've been asked to create um, graphics in that style and it always seems to be for people who are no longer with us so I just want to make that clear um, when I'm looking for the right photo for an airbrush style graphic I always go with something like on a light background preferably where the artist or subject is wearing a lighter colored like shirt as well um, so any of these that I'm clicking on would work great I wouldn't go with you know anything like these it's just they're just gonna be a lot harder to use I love this photo because it's from the shoulders up. I'll be able to um, enlarge it quite a bit and the face will be prominent. Pop Smoke's face will be prominent. So that's key in my opinion with these style, style of graphics. Um, so yeah, let's just right click, copy image, go into Photoshop, Command V, Control V if you're on uh, PC. We're just gonna size it up. You'll see that I've got, um, show transform controls clicked at the top or the box checked and that creates like the little boxes around the outside that definitely have a name that i don't know so that's cool um <laughs> but uh yeah you just basically use those to resize any any photo or any object okay so we've got the photo sized up um the first thing i'm gonna do is go to window properties and since it's already showing i actually don't need to do that let's close it window properties all right you'll see quick actions here if you're in i don't know like photoshop probably 2015 or later um i'm using 2021 you can just click remove background 
And depending on how you know complex your background is, it's gonna work better or worse. Um, this did a pretty good job. Let's zoom in to see, you know, there's still some like fragments left over from the, from the background of the photo. To get rid of those, you can just click the mask, which is like this black and white silhouette. And then we'll go to our brush tool over here in our toolkit. And then we'll select, I'm gonna select a hard round brush and maybe size it to like 20 because the details are relatively small. Now, here's where you wanna pay attention to your swatches on the left side. If you hit X, you can flip between them, but you want them to be black and white. When you've got the black set as your foreground, that's going to get rid of the original photo, right? Or the background in this case, okay? So that's what we can do to clean it up. If like we accidentally mess up here, I mean, you could just hit Command Z and undo it, or you could bring it back by flipping to white as your foreground, and then you can just paint it back and it'll you know bring in that original photo, right? So I'm just gonna go through here, clean it up. Um, I'll speed this part of the video up so you don't have to <laughs> sit through it, but yeah, I'll be right back. All right, so we've got the photo all cleaned up. Um, I always like to mention that, you know, in these videos I work a lot faster than I normally would just so the, the tutorial isn't super long. Um, when you're cleaning things up, make sure you take your time, get everything as, as smooth and clean as possible, okay? All right, so the next thing we're gonna do here is put a gradient on the left, bottom, and right side of the photo to sort of blend it in with the background. Um, I could also use the eraser tool, but I try to use methods that are less destructive um, in case I need to go back and, and edit it, edit the original in some way, which would be pretty hard to do if I erase a bunch of it. So to do that, to add the gradient, make sure that your foreground is set to whatever your canvas color is, like the background. So in this case, I've got it set to white here. Then double click the layer and let's just make sure that We've got the default list going here. We'll just click gradient overlay. We want to use the, the swatch that is um, white to the transparent grid. So that's the second option here under basics. This might all look a little bit different depending on the version you're using, but this is what you ultimately want to use, okay? And so we'll click that. We'll set the scale to 10%. And that'll just allow for like a, a super like clean, small sort of gradient. Um, and then the angle 180 is gonna be on the right side. So we're good there. And I'm just moving it over by holding down, um, you know, the mouse, clicking the mouse, holding it down and then just dragging, um, dragging on the canvas, okay? So we just want a nice smooth gradient. Once we've got one, we can just click the little plus sign next to gradient overlay and then we'll change the angle to zero, okay? And zero is gonna be this left side. And so we'll try to match, you know, the right, just a nice natural gradient. And then we'll do one more gradient, clicking the plus sign here, and then we'll change it to um, 90. And that's gonna be the bottom, okay? And we'll just drag it up again, just trying to make this all look sort of as natural as possible. All right, so we've got our gradients. I think maybe we should feather the, the edges a little bit on this image, just so it's a little bit softer, given that this is supposed to look sort of airbrushed. And I think like the softer we make the edges, the better the result is gonna be. So to do that, just again, click the silhouette here, and that's gonna bring up the properties box. And then you can just bump up the feather a bit and just kind of eyeball it. Like, don't go crazy. Like, <laughs> You don't want to like make it look all like uh, blurry and shit. So maybe like, yeah, like just for easy math, let's just do four pixels. All right. So that looks good. We've got a nice clean cutout, you know, image. We've got the gradients. Next thing I'm going to do is command J and just duplicate the layer in case we need to go back to it. Um, the next step I would say is right clicking 
and doing convert to smart object because I have the feeling that once we start applying the sort of painterly airbrush effect to the photo, the mask might affect it, like the feathering might affect it. So just create a smart object, you'll be good to go. Um, now we can get into this airbrush sort of effect. So let's zoom in a bit so you can see this and go to, we'll go to filter, stylize, oil paint. And that's gonna bring up this oil paint box. It's already got the settings I was using on the example before, which is stylization 10, cleanliness 10, scale 10, just go all the way to the right with all those, and then bristle detail go to zero. And I'll just show you for the sake of this tutorial, you know, when you bump up the bristle detail, it looks fine. It doesn't really change it a ton, but I have found that like, you, we actually want like fewer details because in airbrushing, it's hard to get really, really tiny details because um, you're using just like sp you're spraying paint. You know what I mean? It's literally in the name. So um, that's the other reason we don't want lighting on as well. I'll show you. When lighting is on, it sort of creates like a, almost like bevel emboss because it's like creating these highlights and shadows and we don't really want that either. So just click that box off and it, and it smooths it out a bit more, right? So once we've got all these, um, you know, numerical values in here, everything is, is set up, click OK. And then I'm actually going to apply that exact same effect two more times. And so you can just go to filter, oil paint, It'll bring it right back up, click OK. All the settings are the same. Again, filter oil paint, click OK. And so now we've got three oil painted effects going on this photo, right? And just again for comparison so we can see how much that changed it, like it's pretty dope, right? Definitely looks painted to me. So, so we're good on that. If you want to leave it where it is, if you like how this looks, that's cool. I'm personally going to duplicate it one more time and I'm going to change the top layer, um, the blend mode to screen and maybe like take the opacity down to, I don't know, 80. The reason I do that is because for one, it makes the gradient look better to me. It doesn't look as harsh. It looks a little bit more natural and I don't know, it just looks better to me it looks like it brings out a little bit more detail you know what i mean so do whatever you want but that's just like a little extra thing that i like to add in um from here i mean we can just add in the text so we'll go over here on on our tools panel click the horizontal type tool it's this letter t click on the canvas i'm you know in a layer underneath the um the pop smoke photo and then we'll just type out let's change the swatch to black type out pop smoke. Um, this font is called Billion Dreams. I think I've used it for other airbrush style graphics in the past. It just works great. It's like a really chunky, you know, like calligraphy style font. So I'll link that in the description of this video along with a couple others that you might find useful for this style. Um, right away, I'm noticing that there's a lot of space between pop and smoke. And you know, if I hit backspace, that kind of gets rid of it. So I'll just do that. Otherwise, alternatively, if that doesn't work for you, you can just like, you could highlight the P and just change the kerning to you know, negative 100, 200, 300, whatever you might need to do. In this case, just hitting um, the backspace is gonna work for me. I'll just make sure all the kerning's at zero. All right, cool. All right, so we've got our text laid out. I'm actually gonna use a textile pack on this now um, to make it look more you know, in the airbrush style. I actually collabed with a, a super dope designer. His name's Juan Pilar um, on this pack for fullermo.com. And so we'll just go to my desktop, grab the master bundle here. There's over 500 um, tools in this master bundle at this point. And so we'll just go to the airbrush textiles pack here, grab this ASL file, drag it to Photoshop, open up Photoshop, click the text layer, and we'll see all our options right here. 
Um, this is a super dope pack. One of one of my favorites, to be honest. It's just so like on point with that airbrush style. Just click through here, see which one you want to use. Ultimately, we're going to use this um, for this tutorial, but I'll just show you guys all of these options that are here. Juan crushed this pack, and I'm so hyped that he he could, he collabed with me on this. Um, and we definitely have more coming, so um, keep your eye out for that. But we're going to use this option. Now, I don't necessarily want to use pink for this. I want to use something more um, reflective of the original photo. And so we'll, we'll select this for now, but then I'm gonna bring up the original photo and grab some colors from that, like this light blue, maybe a little bit of a darker blue as well. Um, and I think we'll probably keep it between these. I'll just grab a few things, maybe just a little bit darker. Yeah, like that. Like that shade of blue is probably good. And then we'll go back to the original text and we'll just change some colors. And so this might be helpful for some of you that are asked, I've, I've been asked before, like how do you change um, the textile pack colors? Like it's, it's literally this simple, like just find, like I'm trying to find where that pink is, it's in the drop shadow. So just click this pink, change it to like this blue, boom, and you're good. Um, I think from here, I'm also gonna want to give it like a curve, right? Like an arc to it. And so to do that, just click the T again, go up to the top here and click this T, which is the warp text tool, and then go to arch. Not quite that much, but a little bit, maybe like, again, for easy math, let's go 40%. And then we're gonna change the vertical distortion and bring it down a bit so it straightens the text out a little bit more, just so it's more readable, I guess, and looks more natural. That should be good, click OK. And then I'm just gonna bring it down here. I think I actually edited the S2 because I didn't like how high it was. I wanted the, the text to look a little bit more even across the top. Um, and so to do that, I'll just rasterize the type and then I'll use the um, the polygonal lasso tool here and just like cut out the S, right? Nothing too complicated there. Click the move tool and then I'll just hold down shift and use the arrow key and just bump it down. You know, it doesn't change. You know, you can, you can very much still read that it says pop smoke. It just looks to me a little bit better now as far as like going on a t-shirt, you know? So we're good there. Let's see, do we like where it's sitting? I think it's pretty good. Okay. All right. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is actually use the Airbrush Elements kit as well. Um, and by the way, if you wanna learn how to like create your own, um, you know, Airbrush style text effect from scratch, just watch my original tutorial because I didn't use a textile pack in that. Um, so if you'd rather do that, that's all good too. Um, but yeah, let's use this brush kit. And so we'll go up to our brushes. I've already got it installed right here, but just for the sake of this tutorial, let's get rid of it and I'll show you how to install it really quick. Um, so yeah, we'll just go out to the master bundle again and we'll go to the airbrush elements and brush kit. Um, all the PNG elements are here. So if you'd rather just like drag stuff in, that's cool. I think brush kits are a lot easier to use. And so we'll just go to the brush set, find this ABR file. Again, just drag it to Photoshop, open up Photoshop, back to our brushes, and we'll see, you know, the kit that we just deleted is now back. So fairly easy to install. From here, I mean, you can just mess around with stuff. Like I think the first thing I added was these clouds. So I'll just click the, the plus, um, you know, uh, thumbnail, <laughs> down here next to the trash can on our layers panel. And that's gonna create a new layer. And then I'm gonna use a lighter blue, so I'm changing the swatch and just click. And we've got some nice clouds in here. Move them around, see where they're gonna look best. I kinda like them a little bit lower here. You wanna be mindful though when you're moving them around that if you move them too low, they're gonna look weird because we've got this gradient on, on the photo, right? 
So you want to make sure you're not like doing that. Pick up the phone. But uh, yeah, that looks pretty good there. Maybe a little bit more centered. Okay. And I think I'm going to end up moving the pop smoke text over a little bit too. Okay. So if you want to change the color of these clouds, um, all you have to do is click that layer and you can just do a color overlay here. So you could, you know, all day just experiment with whatever colors you want to use. We're going to keep it with that light blue. Let's make another new layer and just start like adding some of these accents. So like, let's see, we've got small star cluster. Let's use that, but let's make it a darker blue. So it kind of has some nice contrast from those clouds. I don't like to use, personally, I try not to use these brushes more than once per graphic, um, except for like the little like dots, that's like fine. But I think any of these that are more like unique um, should really only be used once. That's just my opinion, but let's use another one. Let's make a new layer. I like to make a layer for each one, just so it's easier to like move around later, you know? Like where that is, right above that O, that's a nice place for that. I'm basically just looking for like little pockets where I can add just little accents and trying to be like thoughtful about it so it's not just like super random, you know, the same way I'm sure an airbrush artist works when they create, you know, t-shirts. Um, what else can we add? Let's add, let's just add some more little dots for that, we don't even need to use that brush kit. We can just go to general brushes, soft round, and just bump it down maybe to like, yeah, that actually looks decent. Let's create a new layer and just make some like little dots, little like spray painted dots, right? Again, just finding like little spots and trying to make it as balanced as possible so that so it's not just like super heavy on one side. I can already tell there's this would be a nice spot for another one of these like um, sort of clusters. So let's see what else we can work with. Here, we've got some bursts. You know what? Let's actually just add a burst. I love this one because it's going to make some nice negative space. I'll show you. Let's create a new layer and let's go down. Let's drag that layer down to second like from the bottom because these are the clouds and let's just see what happens here with this dark blue sort of frame yeah that's pretty dope that's what i was saying like with the negative stuff like i made this frame so that it would like create some negative space with these little white accents so that works pretty well and then i think i'll probably get rid or at least move some of these so they're not like interfering with that frame Where's the other one? I think there was, oh, it's the star cluster. Oh, right here, okay. So this thing is sort of interfering with that new frame a little bit. Where can we move that? Maybe just move it here, yeah. Okay. I mean, that could be it if you wanted, but we've also got, um, let's just group all this together, minus this so I can uh, just show you guys really quick. We've also got this text at the bottom here. So let's just bring all this down too so it's a little bit more, there we go. Um, we've got all this, this text at the bottom so let's get that added. And for that, I believe I used, I definitely used um, blow brush. Yeah, cool, okay. So yeah, blow brush is from Defont. Um, I will link that as well. And we wrote long live the woo. Long live in the woo. Jesus. Okay. I'm just gonna drag that out a little bigger. And then since we're using um a, a actually we're using a, a style for this text that's not technically in our original, the, this pack that we're using, because we made some color changes, we can just go to new style and create a style specifically for this graphic. 
So now when I click this long live the woo text, I can just use that style and it matches it exactly. I think the only adjustment I would make is changing the distance of the drop shadow. Since the text is smaller, like it makes sense that the drop shadow wouldn't quite be as big. And then from there, I'll just bump it up. Maybe make it a little bit bigger, but not much. It's pretty close. Like, boom. And there you go. I mean, listen, having these, you know, different tools to use is super useful. If you want to make them on your own, that's cool. If you want to use mine, that's cool. But like, I don't know, in my opinion, like it's just nice to like have that stuff to mess around with and just have the option there, you know what I mean? So let's just mock this up really quick, make sure it looks good on a t-shirt. We'll go back to our master bundle. Let's go to the Rue Porter luxury mock-ups and we'll throw it on a, uh, a t-shirt. I almost said hoodie. It'd probably work on a hoodie too, but all right, get rid of these instructions. Let's change the color to Let's try it on a cream color t-shirt. I bet that would look dope. I'm just going to go to layers, flatten image. I'm just going to grab this whole thing here with the, um, with the rectangular marquee tool, command copy, control copy, of course, if you're on PC. And then we'll just drop it right in this layer here that says your design goes here, command V, change the blending mode to multiply. That's what I always do on lighter colored t-shirts. Convert to smart objects so we can size it down without losing resolution. And boom. That looks pretty fucking good to me. I mean, if I saw this, you know, I would definitely think there was some airbrushing going on. It, it definitely doesn't just look like a plain photo. Um, you know, and like I said, white's gonna work amazing on white. Cream, it looks good. Once you get into these other weak <laughs> colors, not so much, but uh, sand, decent, you know. But um, yeah, white's probably what, what you'd wanna use for this. So that is it for today's tutorial. I hope that you learned something and you're able to apply these techniques to your next airbrush style graphic. Um, I always like to mention that my intention with these videos is not so that you can make some airbrush style shirts of Pop Smoke and sell them and benefit off his name and his image or anyone's for that matter. Um, you can apply these techniques to copyright free photos. You can make stuff for your friends and family, all that. Um, but I just don't recommend selling shirts illegally. So I always want to say that if you have any questions, you have comments, you want to see a future tutorial, that's what the comment section is for. So just drop a comment down below. Um, I'll try to reply to you as soon as possible. Hit me up on Instagram. If you have any particular questions, you need feedback on some designs you did, you just wanna say what's up, it is at fuller.moe. Um, I always love to hear from every single one of you. Please like and subscribe, share all that stuff. I think it's still like a 70-30 or 80-20 split between people who are actually subscribed to my channel and watch these videos and people who aren't. Um, again, I appreciate everyone who is subscribed, but yeah, most people who watch my videos aren't subscribed to my channel, so I don't know. Maybe it's me, whatever it is, I would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Lastly, I would be remiss not to say rest in peace, Virgil Abloh, literally just a few days ago, he passed away um, from cancer. I've followed his entire career all the way from, you know, Pyrex Vision to literally before that, just like seeing him hanging out with like Ye and like, Don C and, and um, Ivan Jasper, all those dudes hanging out, uh, Jerry in the mix. Um, but yeah, from Pyrex Vision to Off-White to of course Louis Vuitton to helping Ye with visuals and, and album artwork and all that stuff. Amazingly creative. I always, I don't know, I felt like some sort of kinship to him in that like he went to Wisconsin for school. He was always very outside of the box, didn't have like a, a formal, formal education in every respect, never called himself like a fashion designer. He said he was more of an architect. I think that was actually his background. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just always thought that was cool. He was just very 
um, non-traditional. And that was like, if you check out the Off-White website, or no, it's the Virgil, Virgil's personal website. He's very adamant about like creating this new educational system where it's just like, we don't need really colleges anymore. And if we do, it should be structured differently for these kids. And I really loved his sentiment about um, just creating immediately, like, like urgency is so important um, because life is so short and, and nobody exhibited that, um, in my opinion, like in recent history more than him and just like all he was able to accomplish and uh, inspire so many. So rest in peace, Virgil. Um, that is it for today. I will catch you in the next video. Peace. Pick up the phone.